Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to continue working on the table and lamp today. Um, I'll spend about half the time working in um, Lightwave and half the time um, in Blender. Um, could I have a show of hands from everybody who's working in Blender? One, okay. Let me let you talk real quick. So Juan, how familiar are you with Blender? Um, I'm kind of familiar with it when it comes to uh, sculpting and modeling, some modeling with it. But okay. when it comes to like light and also like layouts, I'm not that familiar with it. Okay. Well, I'm learning it myself. So, um, you know, when I was able to build a table and lamp, um, but I'm having issues with not so much lighting, but with surfacing and that sort of thing. So, yeah, okay. So if you guys would rather use Blender, then I don't want to um, stop you from that. Um, but my assistance will be limited, and I can always point to a lot of videos that are available to help you out. I downloaded the other day. Um, here, let me go ahead and stop sharing for a moment so you can see me. I downloaded this. It's available uh, from uh, the Blender Guru guy. It's a seven-page seven page, um, document that gives you shortcuts for Blender. Seven pages of shortcuts. So um, that will be very useful for you Blender folks. Um, and unfortunately, there's no such thing for the, for Lightweight. So let me go back to screen sharing again. Okay. So, um, let me go to participants real quick. And one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and disable talking from you so you just see me here in the recording. Okay, so this is where we left off with Lightwave. Um, I am in layout at the moment. Um, a couple of things to take note of. Um, I'm in camera. It says current camera view. If you are in perspective view, that can be very different. Okay, so the perspective view is not what the camera necessarily sees. So make sure that you are, before you do any kind of rendering, that you're in camera view. And then if you need to move the camera, you need to rotate the camera to get a, a closer view or a nice tight shot of your table and lamp, then make sure at the bottom that the camera is selected. And then when you hit T for move, for example, if I want to get a little bit closer to it, and I can move my mouse forward. If I want to move the camera up, then I right click and I can move the camera up a little bit. And I can left click and move it over to the right or to the left. Okay. And then when you get a shot that's um that works for you, then you know, leave it alone for a while. We don't need to use or any keyframes or add any elements down here in the timeline. So what I want to do next, the next few minutes, is I wanted to refine the surfaces. The other day I added chrome to the legs and added glass to the top. Um, let's go ahead and refine the, the lamp shade a little bit. Um, I might add a bump map to the lamp base and I want to put a light inside it. And um, we'll maybe add a texture to the floor and then we'll call it done and we will go ahead and render it, and that will be it for our table and lamp. And then what I want to do, as I said, I'm going to switch to, oh, where's my cursor? There we go. I'm going to switch to Blender. And this is what I've done in Blender, okay? Um, and if I switch in Blender to the shaded or rendered view, this is what we have right so far, okay? So that's what we've got in Blender, and I'll rebuild this for you and show you how I got here. 
Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go back to layout. Okay, so to refine the surface texture in the lampshade, that's what I said, I wanted to add a bump map so that it looks um, not so smooth, but a little bumpy in here. And I wanted to add, um, make sure that when I put a light inside the light, the lampshade, that light will penetrate it. So what I need to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to bring up my surface editor over to the left. Make sure that I have the lamp shade selected. And then what I'm doing at the moment, we have principled BSDF selected. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go from principled BSDF to standard. And as soon as I do that, notice that it just turns to a gray. I don't want gray. I'm going to go back and use kind of a light yellow for my color. But it's kind of an older way of working at the moment, but it's a good, I think, a better introduction at the moment rather than using the node editor, which is a little bit more sophisticated for um, editing your surfaces. But what I can do now is I can look at this list of elements and determine um, what things need to be ch changed. So for example, if you're looking at a lampshade with the light turned on, it, ha it looks like the shade itself is emanating light. So that would be something called luminosity that I could, you know, crank up a little bit and make it kind of bright. Okay. So just a little bit. Actually, it should be quite a bit. Um, but I'm just, for the time being, I'm going to leave it at around uh, maybe 35%. Um, because lampshades are not shiny, they don't have highlights, they're a matte surface, we don't need to change the specularity or the glossiness. In fact, I could turn all of those off altogether. They're not, they don't have any reflective properties, but they are a little bit transparent. So maybe I want, you know, 10% or 5% transparency, okay? Just so you can see through them a little bit. More importantly though, is what I wanna change is the translucency. Translucency allows you, allows light to penetrate through it. So if I crank that up and you really won't see anything at the moment, um, but I'm gonna crank that up all the way to maybe 95%. Um, so um, think of it this way, when you're out, out of doors going for a walk at night and um, you're looking at the houses with the lights turned on and they have their shades drawn, you can see silhouettes, okay? You can't see the people or the things behind the, um, the, the shades, but you can see silhouettes so that those light shades or those shade, window shades allow light to penetrate, but you can't see the image through it. So that's what I'm doing here. That's really all I need to do at the moment for this. Um, the next thing that I'd like to try to do is I'm going to use the, the lamp base. So I'll select that. And again, we're using BSDF and I could go ahead and I could use the node editor, but again, I'm going to change. I'm going to switch for the time being to standard settings for the moment. And again, it goes to a gray. I'm going to go back to a nice deep kind of purpley kind of texture here. Um, that will work nice for us. How about this one? I guess that's the same. No, it has a reddish tinge. That's fine. It works for me. So what I want to do down here is you'll notice that um, under this list of uh, properties that we can change for our surfaces, and the goal is to make all of the surfaces look as real as possible. Um, I can come down here and I can click T for bump. And when I do, um, a texture editor will pop up. And in that texture editor right now, its default is set to image map. Instead though, what I'm going to use is what is called a procedural texture, which is a texture that is generated um, mathematically. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it to, I'm just going to use turbulence as the default. Another good one might be um, uh, crackle. 
Let's see if we have that up here. If you crumple, crumple is a good one. So let's use crumple, just so you can really see this. Now in Lightwave, what we have here is the default size for this. And the default size for the objects when you create them, using the numeric requester and when you create a shader or a, a surface for textures, the default sizing is one meter. Well, that's way, way, way too big. So if I change this to maybe 200 millimeters, let's go to that and see if I see a difference here. 200 millimeters, and I keep hitting the tab. And you'll notice, if you can see, it's starting to look a little bit bumpy down there. Let's change this, the Z to 200 millimeters. And not 200 meters, but 200 millimeters, because the default um, unit of measurement is meters in here. <clears throat> and if I zoom in in here, let me go ahead and remove the bump texture in here. Let's close that. And let's zoom in a little bit so I can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to close the surface editor too, just because I'm kind of short on real estate. You can see that it's starting to get sort of bumpy here. And so that's a bump map. So we can add transparent maps. We can add um, translucent maps. We can add bump backs. We can add uh, luminosity. We can do all sorts of things to our textures here. I don't know if you can see the difference a little bit here. That's what we've got going. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the, the texture for the floor a little bit. So I need to bring up the surface editor back up. Okay, and let's select the floor. And I'm going to use an image for this now. And let's see if I can't um, find an image for this. And again, it has um, principal BSDF. I'm going to switch to standard right now. Um, for that. And again, you'll notice that it goes to a flat gray. That's just fine right now because I'm going to add an image. Not only can you use procedurals, can you use BSDF, you can use um, presets. And that maybe that's something that I want to do. If I were to go back to BSDF, <clears throat> what we were doing the other day, I could go up and bring up presets over to the left. So let me bring up presets and make sure that they are visible. Um, come on, come on, come on. Uh, there it is. It's hidden underneath my image here. So um, I need to push a few things out of the way so that you guys can see a little bit better. But let's focus on the floor. So what I'm going to try, let's go ahead over here. And we have, you know, metal surfaces, we have glass, we have fabric, we have wood, um, we have stone. So let's look at some stone surfaces and see what we have here. So maybe I want a polished granite floor. Let's try that. So if I double click on that and I load the surfaces into the floor, let's see what we get. Yeah, that looks okay. So, so. Well, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Maybe I want a wood floor. Um, I can use their wood floor. Let's try that instead. I don't think it will work as well. Um, come on. Floor. And under here, oh, let's try wood. And they just have one here. And it doesn't look very wood-like. I want something that looks a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to switch then. And again, I don't have, I can continue to use BSDF, but I'm going to, for right now, again, using an older system, I'm going to go back to standard. And to do that, um, to bring in an image, I need to click on T for texture. So I click here, T for texture. And this is where you would have to bring in one of your own images. Um, I do have some on my computer here, and I believe I have some saved in the, uh, the shared folder on uh, Google Drive. I'll have to check that after class. I thought I put them in there. I can't say for sure. 
But again, we're, we're set here to a default image that we're using right now. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to bring an image in here. Um, because this is a flat plane, I'm going to use planar projection. But you'll notice that we have other projections, cylindrical, spherical, cubic, front projection, and UV. And we will be using all of these later this semester, but I'm going to use planar. Um, and by default, planar is along the z-axis. Um, and we'll see what problems arise with that. But now I need to select an image. So I'm going to go ahead and load the image. Okay. <clears throat> and I need to go inside my um, computer here where I have some saved. And I'm going to go into, um, let's see, applications, because that's where I have Lightwave saved. And I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to look at Lightwave 9.6. And I'm going to go into content 8.2. I'm going to go into classic content. This is buried way the hell deep down in here. But what you can do is you can bring in your own images that you take off the internet. But I know that there are some that used to be included with um, Lightwave and are no longer available. So this is something that I have saved from long ago. So under class con classic content, I'm going to go to images. Um, I'm going to scroll down to wood. And I'm going to select wood tile PGA. And select that. Okay. And that doesn't look much like tiles, does it? Because it looks it's streaked along the surface. It sort of looks like striped pants that you would see from somebody uh, you know, wearing pants in the, in the 70s. Um, that's way beyond, you know, much older than most of you take in the class here. So what that has to do with is it has to do is how the image is projected. And it's being projected along the z-axis. Remember the z-axis is by default the one that's perpendicular to the screen. If it were projected along the x-axis, then that's right to left. So that doesn't work either. But if I want to project that image along the y-axis, okay, and in Lightwave, the y-axis is the one that's vertical. And on Blender, it is the z-axis is the one that's vertical. If I click that, I get my tile. Now, if that tile is too big and it looks a little too big, let me go ahead and cut that in half. And that might look a little bit more appropriate. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit 500 millimeters down below. And I'm going to go ahead and hit along the Y, 500 millimeters. And 500 millimeters. So that cuts it in half. And let's see how that looks. That looks a little bit more appropriate. And I'm sort of happy with that. That's OK. Now, um, now that I have that set, um, a few other things that maybe I should tend to um, regarding the floor. Is that a shiny floor? It is, is it a reflective floor? And what is it reflecting? Um, so maybe under specularity, I can crank that up a little bit to maybe 20 for the floor. How do I know that? I don't. I'm guessing from experience. Lossiness, maybe I'll turn that down a little bit to 40%. But these are all attributes that surfaces can have. They don't necessarily have. And then the reflectivity, I can crank that up to maybe just, you know, the heck of it. Um, it might be overkill a little bit, but if it's a highly polished floor, maybe 10%. Okay. So you can see the shadow cast by the light. And I'm just using the default light right now. But um, a few things that I want to change. I want to, um, I'm not crazy about the background right now, the default background that's being given. I'm going to go ahead and change that and get that set up before I add the light to the lamp itself. Um, to see what the, the default light looks like, I can switch from current camera view to um, perspective view. And if I zoom out, let's see. 
It's not, oh, because I have VPR turned on. Sorry, let me go back to texture shaded. There we go. So now the texture shaded, if I zoom out, you can see that the light is really about the same direction as the camera. So this, if I select the light, I can change that light to any kind of light that I want. Um, I'm going to leave the default light right now, but to look at the camera properties or the light properties, you select either one of these. And down at the bottom, I select the properties panel. Okay, that's popping up on my screen up there. And now I can see that the current light, the light name is just light. Um, it is a distant light, but you'll notice that we have area lights, distant lights, environment lights. We have linear lights. We have n-gons that we can use, photometric lights, point lights, primitive lights, spherical lights, and spotlights, a whole array of different kinds of lights. So I'm going to leave this one distant for the time being, just because it's not that it's the best choice, but for our demonstration right now, it, it will serve us just fine at the moment. I can change the color of it. So by clicking here, I can change the color of the light and I can pick inside here my color picker or I can go around the color wheel or I can pick from an individual um, swatch. I'll leave it white for the time being. And I can also determine the intensity. Now it's not done in percentages anymore. Um, one or two versions ago, Lightwave changed to Lux which I guess is a more accurate way of defining the intensity of light. And the default intensity is 3.14 lux. So I will leave that as a, as a default right now, just to go with that. I need to go back to um, camera view. Okay, and because in this texture shaded mode, you really can't see much. I'm going to switch back to VPR to give me a, a better look at what I'm seeing here. And now what I need to do is I need to switch and I need to make sure that I'm in render, have the render tab selected. And what I want to do is I'm going to select backdrop and a little effects window should pop up. And I'm going to turn off gradient backdrop so that it's just black for right now, okay? Black will serve us just fine at the moment. Okay, it's a little bit more dramatic, but um, it will be fine. If you want to change the color of it, and you would rather have a gray or something like that, then that would be okay. You know? Or if you want a color background, because you want to see the tabletop a little bit better. But I'm going to leave it black. Just for right now, if I need to change it, I can. If I want to put an image in the background, I can do that, and we will be doing that um, on another lesson. Okay, so I'll leave that. And the colors and everything look a little bit more intense when I do that. So that's one of the things that I can do. The other thing that I need to do is that I need to go in over here, and I need to look at render properties to make sure that everything is going to be rendered okay. So I'm going to click back here. Um, it's going up to my other screen over here. So I need to bring that over here and bring that down. And so now what we need to do with render properties visible, we need to um, change a few things. We need to, we have under general start frame, because we're only render it, rendering a single frame. Um, preview, I'm going to leave at 640 by 480. I'm going to, uh, where our um, start frame is frame zero and stop frame, or frame stop is frame one. Just leave all those alone. Under render properties here, um, we can change a few things. So for example, um, if I need to, in a little bit, to improve the quality of my rendering, I may need to change some of these. How do you know what the change? It is, um, Again, sort of a guessing game, unfortunately. Under global illumination, I want to make sure that um, enable global illumination is checked. Okay, so that, that's turned on. 
I'm going to go ahead and enable caching down here, and that will help a little bit. That should. The number of rays, I'm going to go ahead and crank that up a bit. So I'm going to um, maybe crank that up to 10 rays for right now, since we have a small scene. And that should help us right now. I'm going to go to volumetrics. And I'm going to use volumetrics screen scattering right now. Make sure that that is turned on. Okay. Um, so indirect sampling, I don't think I need to check that right now. I don't need to work on any buffers or any output, but I'm good to go for the moment. And that would be a good idea to do a, a test rendering to see what I get. Um, so let's do that. So with render selected, um, um, I need to make sure that the camera is selected. And then I'm going to go to camera properties down at the bottom. And with that hopping up, I need to change a few settings in here. So I'm going to leave the perspective camera is the type of camera with a focal length of 24 millimeters. Um, under resolution, 645 by 480 would be the minimum that you would use. I can go ahead here and if I click on that, I can change and you can see that there are a whole slew of different sizes to choose from. I'm going to switch to HDTV. Notice that that changes the proportions a little bit, but that's a little bit larger. Um, if I prefer the settings that I used before, the 640 by 480, but I want to make just this little bit bigger image, I can do that, but I can change the multiplier here, and I can go to maybe 200%, so it's double the size. So that might be a choice that I would want to make. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to do in LightWave to refine the settings, and it depends on what kind of rendering you're going to do, but I'm going to jump to a kind of a finished rendering. I'm going to change the minimum samples to 10, and I'm going to use the maximum samples to maybe around 15. And what that does is it will um, reduce the amount of, uh, it should help to reduce the amount of um, dithering that occurs. Or the, and, uh, so that you don't have quite as many jaggies, okay? Now, something else that we might do, let's go, let's just leave that for right now. So I'll close that, and now I can go to render frame, and I'm looking at the preview here, and it should take just a few seconds or a few minutes to do this. Now, what I would probably wanna do for my final rendering because it, it, uh, the, the lamp is looking, the table are looking pretty good, but they sit back pretty far. So I'm gonna, um, I don't wanna see the edges of the back of the, um, the floor, you know, it kind of bothers me a little bit. It's taking a few seconds here, more than I thought it would um, to render, because um, I'm only at 39% um, right now. So as it's rendering, I'll talk a little bit. Um, you know what, I'm, because it is taking too long, I am gonna abort it, because I don't wanna use up the time that I'm gonna use for the blender people. Okay. Um, it's coming out okay. So what I can do though instead um, is now might be a good time to put the other light in here. So um, where am I at on time? As I said, I only wanted to spend a half an hour. So I'm getting close to that right now. So um, let me go ahead now. And I'm going to switch from BPR to texture solid here. And I need to put another light in here. So um, what I need to do is under items, what I want to do is I want to add a light and the kind of light that I want to add for the, the lampshade would be a point light. Okay, and I'll name it light bulb. And I'll click OK. And there, it puts it in the center of our universe. So since everything is centered and you can see how it's affecting everything, I can place that and I can move it up into the lampshade itself. 
Okay. So let's go back to um, um, from texture solid to VPR and see where we're at with that. Now, you'll notice that it's looking pretty wild, isn't it? And that's because I have volumetric lighting turned on. So this is really overkill. So what I need to do with the volumetric lighting is I need to change in lights, I need to change those properties so that it isn't quite so intense. It's kind of a cool effect, but it doesn't need to be so intense. So I'm gonna select light, make sure that light bulb is selected and then go back to properties and bring that up. Okay, and when I do, you'll see that we have here, um, we have, this is inverse distant, I have a point light. So there is fall off here, that's amazing. Um, down here, notice that we have volumetric samples too, and we have volumetric intensity, 100%. Well, let's dial that back. I'm gonna go all the way back to maybe 20% and see what we have. And that's probably still way too much. But notice how that's dramatically affecting the appearance of our, um, our scene here. Let's go all the way back to maybe 10%, and that might be more than enough. So when you're in a room at night and you can see um, the, volume, the volume of the light shining through the lampshade and you notice that it's peering through the top and through the bottom here and affecting the shadows, and that's pretty good. What I also want to do, one, two more things, is that I want to increase the size of the, the, the floor, and I'm going to change the distant light to a, uh, um, let's see, I'm going to change the distant light. What, are, what was I going to do? I'm going to go ahead here, texture, shaded solid, I'm going to select the floor and then over here in modify, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch this and make it bigger. Okay, the tiles are probably a little bit too big now, but that's the way it goes. So I'm not going to change that for our purposes right now. I want to just get rid of the background here. The other thing that I want to do, as I said, is I'm going to change the light. So let's look at lights. I'm going to change this to um, back to VPR. And it's redrawing as I'm doing that. I'm going to look at lights and I don't want the light bulb. I click here to select my distant light. And then I'm going to look at light properties again. And instead of a distant light, I'm going to use a uh, spotlight. And notice that the spotlight, because I have volumetrics turned on, is um, automatically visible as well. Now, could I leave that on? I could. I really don't need it on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and volumetric intensity for that light. I'm going to select zero. There we go. So we just see the volume metrics from the lampshade itself. And as this redraws, um, I'm getting closer to the effects that I want so that it is pointing directly at my table and lamp. And I'm good to go. Should I need to change the direction of the light, <clears throat> I can do that from perspective view or I can switch to light view and I'll select the, um, the light. And now I'm looking at my scene through the light. And if I need to change the angle of that, I can by hitting R for rotate. And I can also hit T for move. And so let's go ahead and um, hit T for move, move it a little bit closer. Like so, so I'm just moving the light. Now let's hit Y for rotate. Let's move that down a little bit. Now let's go back from light view to camera view. 
and see where we're at here. So for today, um, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to go ahead and render it, and then I'm going to switch to Blender. <clears throat> now, when I render it, I need to go back to Render, the Render tab, and I need to, since I've already set up the camera, I have my Render settings. I'm going to Render Frame, not Render Scene. Okay, and it's going to take a few minutes. And hopefully it takes that, um, that I've made enough changes that it's going to remove um, some of some of that um, speckled quality in there. And if it doesn't, then there's other changes that I need to make. Now it looks already like it's taking most of that out of there. When I'm done, then what I need to do is I need to save that rendered frame. And I want you to save yours as both a JPEG and a Photoshop file. And I need this to finish rendering before I, um, I do that. Um, while I'm waiting for this to, to render, do any of you have any questions for me? I'm trying to go through this smoothly and not too quickly, but you do have the video that you'll be able to rewatch if you need to. And this would be for our purposes right now, just fine. Um, if you want, I would probably move the camera a little bit closer. Um, I don't like looking at objects from either a profile view or a frontal view. Um, they don't look as dynamic as three-dimensional. And since we're working with 3D modeling, I wanna make sure that this looks as three-dimensional as possible. So I like looking at objects from more of a four-fifths or a three-quarter view. And that's how I've set up the table. And um, to get a little bit more dramatic effect, I'm viewing it from above. You could also view it from below. And that would be interesting, too. Um, so I need to know from you any Q&As. Um, any comments that you might have? Just because I'm, I've got so much stuff going on with my computer, it's taking a little bit longer. It's close to 50% rendered now, and it looks like it's going to be okay. Um, and as soon as this is done, I can switch to Blender. Okay. While I'm checking here, I'm going to make sure that a few more people have have logged in make sure that I have you here. Um, Jonathan Guido is here. So um, check you. I have Jonathan Garcia, Juan Fernandez, Cassandra. Um, how did we reduce the jaggies of the light effect? Mine is very pixelated. Yeah. What you do is <clears throat> make sure that the camera is selected down below and then click the properties panel. When the, I'm, mine's rendering, so I can't do that. So um, when properties panel comes up, there's minimum and maximum samples. That's where you change that. By default, it's set to zero. So you wanna make sure that you set like a minimum of 10 to 15 and a maximum of 15 to 20. I have a question here. Oh, that's already from Jonathan. Okay, done. There we go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, hurry up. Um, so maybe on your computers, this will go a little bit quicker. You know, but because I have a whole bunch of, of other things running at the same time on my laptop, and even though I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, I have two terabyte hard drive, an external 10 terabyte hard drive and everything, and lots of um, video RAM and that sort of thing. It just, it's bogging it down. And the more lights you add, the more effects you add, things like that, it will really slow down the rendering process. Um, so for interior scenes and that sort of thing, that's something that I'm working on at the moment an interior of a gallery. And some of the lights that I'm using are these IES lights to simulate real lights. 
um, it really, really slows down the rendering dramatically. So um, those are some of the things that can be effect, in fact. Um, yeah, it's just taking time. Well, this is rendering, we'll come back to it. Let me see if I can't just go ahead and switch to Blender and see if that will help. So here's the, the Blender scene that I've created. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start from scratch, just to help some of you. And um, a couple of things that we need to look at when I do that. So I have this saved. So I'm gonna go under File, New, just I want a new general file. I don't want a 2D animation or anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and save changes to the table and lamp, make sure that that's done. And this is the, where it starts in Blender. <clears throat> so I can, if I click on the upper left, right hand corner, I can look at this from the top view. That's the Z. I can look at this from the Y view, which is the front. I can look at it from the X view. I can look at it, you know, from the bottom, from the other Z view. Or if I click and I drag here, I can see this in perspective. Now our camera normally is like so. Um, my rendering just finished. So hold on here. Let me go back to Lightwave. And that's done here. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and when your rendering is done in Lightwave, you have to abort. And my rendering is up here. So I'm going to bring that here. So it's a nice big render. I probably should have made it smaller. That also takes up a lot of time too. This is 1280 by 960, but it's a good size render. Now you can see in the reflective properties, I still have speckles. So I need, there's change that I, changes that I need to make. But you can see the bump map that I have in here. You can see the reflective properties of the glass. You can see the reflective properties of the floor. Um, so the, the table legs, uh, the rendering settings still need to be adjusted. And I will probably deal with that um, over the weekend and then tell you more about it on Monday because I am running out of time. I want to make sure I have enough time for the Blender folks. But what I need to do, once you have your final rendering completed, you go to File and then Save as RGBA. And these are all the different file formats that you can save it as. Well, I want to start by saving it as a JPEG. Okay, so I want to save this not in my there. I'm going to go to my desktop and inside my um, my content folder for this class. I'm going to save it in the image folder. Okay, and I'll save it as table and lamp. And this will be what you will upload to me. Okay, this is what you will upload to me on Google Drive. I can also save this as a Photoshop file. So if I need to go in and retouch it in Photoshop, I can. So again, save um, RGBA, come down here to, where is Photoshop? There is Photoshop. I'll just save it as a 24 bit. Okay, and again, I can name the same thing because it's gonna have a different extension. So table and lamp. This will be a .psd file. Okay, so I'm set to go. So with the exception of the table legs, getting that worked out, probably need more reflective bounces um, to get that um, refined. But um, everything else is looking pretty decent. So let me switch back to Blender. Okay, so let me zoom in here. I can do that by just using the magnification tool and zooming in a little bit, moving the mouse a little. So this is going to be, by default, you have a box. So that's going to be my tabletop. So in the upper left-hand corner, um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have, uh, I'm in object mode. And then what I want to make sure that I select now is I'm going to select edit. 
And with this selected, um, actually I can, I'm gonna s s leave it object. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the scale of it. And when I do that, I can go ahead and use these widgets or over to the right, um, I have the transform properties here. Now, unfortunately, they only have scale in percentages. They don't have them in um, feet or anything. And I can rotate it from here. So I'm gonna have to eyeball this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the, the thickness of this. So this is about the size, the thickness of my tabletop. Now, if I need to make it a little bit smaller, what I can do is I can go from um, the Y view here and I can zoom in a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and I'll shrink this down even a little bit more. That looks pretty good, okay? So let's go back to perspective view, like so. So there's my um, tabletop. And now what I'm gonna do again from the Y side, I'm gonna move it up. So now what I need to do is use the move tool Okay, make sure that it, the object is selected and move it up. This is a little bit different than LightWave. I forget from time to time that, in, that you do need to select in order to make things work. And then remember to deselect when you're done. So now I'm ready to create the table legs. So I'm gonna, as I did in, in LightWave, I'm gonna look at the top view, but because it's opaque, I need to up here, I have these in the upper right-hand corner, I have different ways of of um, viewing this. So I can view it in shaded view. I can also view it, whoops, I don't wanna go back there. Let's go back to, get it crash? Oh, no, 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 no. There, oh no, no, it crashed. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, uh, my apologies. I'm going to keep going with this. And if you guys who are using Blender can stick around, then um, we'll, we'll be good. But I'm going to go ahead and save my scene. So I saved this rendering, but I need to save the scene file. And I'm going to go ahead and save. whoops, Blender quit because I have too much going on. So I'm going to click OK. Yeah. I'm going to go to file here in LightWave and just say save scene because I've already saved it. So that updates it, but I've also saved the properties of some of the objects. So I need to go to file, actually file over here. Okay, and I want to save and I'm going to say save all objects. So that's all saved. So now I can quit LightWave. Um, everything will be deleted if LightWave crashes, if you have not saved anything. So that's a uh, answer Monica Gomez's question. Yeah, if it has not been saved, it will, if it crashes, it will go away. I'm sorry to say. So like with my light, my Blender thing, because it crashed before I saved anything, that will also go away. Anytime you know you have it saved with any program, it will go away. So I'm going to quit to free up some memory. Whoops, I don't want to do that. I don't want to end the meeting. I want to quit LightWave is what I want. I'm going to quit layout and I'm going to go ahead and just say save and exit just to be on the safe side. And so now I have light or blender back up. Okay. So this is my default. So let's go with this again. So for you lightweight folks, um, you might want to stick around to watch Blender and, and works. Um, I've been playing with it for the past couple of days. In addition to working on it over the summer and now I'm you know, refreshing my memory here. So again, what I need to do, um, I'm going to leave object mode selected, but I want to make sure that I change scale. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten the thing first, like so. And now let's look at this from maybe the Y view. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit more clearly. Whoa, whoa. There we go. So I'm going to flatten this just a little bit more. 
but it's more like a, a tabletop, not so thick. Okay. So let's look at this from the top view again. And before this crashes again, if it does, I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go ahead and file, save as, and I'm going to call this um, table and lamp um, part 190, let's see, yeah, part 195. table and lamp. So I know it's, and I'll name it demo. So I know that it's my demo file. Just to make sure that that's saved. Okay, so now I need to place, I need to be able to see through the, the tabletop in order to, to place my legs. So to do that, in the upper right hand corner, we have different ways of viewing. So if I click here, I can see through it. That would be kind of in, in um, wireframe mode. Um, I can click here, which is the, the default setting, which is, um, I'm not sure what it's called, but if I click on this one, uh, I should be able to see through one of these. Let's go back here. I'll just use this one, okay? So let's go back to what I want to do is I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to deselect. Actually, I need to select the object again. But I'm in wireframe. So let's go back again. Let's go here. This should be, I should be able to see through it in this view. So I guess I can't. So I will go back to wireframe and that's just as good for me. So what I want to do now is I'm in object mode, but I want to add my table legs. So I'm going to go ahead and add, and this is where I didn't know where to look before um, the other day and I was lost and I didn't want to spend more time, but it's under mesh. And I can add a plane. I can add another cube. I can add a, a circle. I can add a sphere. I can add, um, but what I want is cylinder. Now in Lightwave, the circle is the cylinder. So now I can add a cylinder and it's huge. I don't need it so big. So now what I can do is I can use the scale tool and we can go ahead and we can make this you know, much smaller, you know, more doable. So let's go ahead and reduce this. So this is, you know, Make sure that this is nice and round. Um, if I'm not sure that it's round, I can always refer over here. Now you'll notice that the X and the Y are different and I'm gonna make them um, zero. Let's make them the same. Make sure, oops. I want them to be 0.8. No, nope, that wasn't it. Let me change this again. There we go. Let me just delete it. And let's right click on it and delete. Let's make it again. So let's go ahead and add another one. Mesh cylinder. There we go. Let's go ahead and select scale. And I can do that from here. And I'm going to go ahead and change. Um, this one a little bit. So that's considerably smaller. I'm going to do that incrementally. This is where I'm not not used at all to working with Blender to be able to do this uniformly. Now let's look over here. So that's 0.2. I said I had 0.8. So let's go ahead here. See if I can't change it in here. Nope, it's, I want this 0.8. So I'm gonna try one more time here. Oh, 
Oh, it's just not letting me change it. Point eight. There we go. Now let's put here, let's also put point eight here, the Y. No, screw it. I'll just do it from here. There we go. Until I get something that's a reasonable facsimile of what I need. Yeah, it's always the case that when you're, you know, doing your demonstrations, that things don't go quite as smoothly as you hope. So that's, you know, it's a little bit too big, uh, but it's going to have to do for us right now. So there we go. So now I can use the move tool up here and I can move this into position. But I don't know what the length of this thing is. So I'm going to move this over like so. And put this, you know, using my grid as a guide here for my table. But let's look at this from the Z axis here. Um, see what we have here. Um, how about if I go back here? There we go. So if I look at this from Z, okay, that's what I want. How about from Y? There we go. So from the Y, I can see that I placed that there. Now I can move this down. Like so now let's go back to looking at it at the top from Z. And what I need to do is I may need to make a duplicate of this. Okay. So if I need to stretch this, I can go back to um, to Y, okay, and I can zoom out a little bit. And if I need to resize it, I can. I can use the scale tool here. And I can make, you know, make it a little bit bigger, a little bit, stretch it out a little bit until it fits. Um, again, I can go from the Z axis, which is the top, and if I need to rescale it again, which may not be a bad idea, but I'm going to leave it for right now. But what I want to do is I'm going to select it. And again, with object mode selected, I'm going to right click on it. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate it. So what I can do here is I can duplicate the object or I can copy the object and then paste it. So now I can right click again and I can now paste object and it replaces that and now I can move the copy of it over. So either way, you have all of those at your disposal. And now this one is the original, so that's the parent. These are the child off of that. And in the upper right-hand corner, you can see here that we have um, a list of the objects in our scene, in our scene collection. So I'll, I'll right-click again, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste the object. And again, notice where it did here. And let's go ahead and select. And let's move that over. Let's move that down. And let's move that over like so. Okay, let's deselect and right click and paste again and select it and let's move that down like so. So there you have, I have my table and table legs. I think the table legs are a little clunky, a little bit too thick, but that's just fine. So now I can look at this in shaded view. I can click here and see this. There's my, my table. And if I need to move this up a little bit, I can do this. Whoa. Move that a little bit too far. There you go. Okay. So clunky table legs, tabletop is a little bit too thin. But, you know, for my first demonstration here using uh, Blender, not so bad. Now, what I should probably do is I should probably assign some basic textures to it. So again, with the object selected, I can come over here and down second from the bottom, this tab, this allows me to add a material. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a material to this. So I'm going to add the base color. Let's go ahead and, and add a material. So I have material one here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add a new one here. Okay. Where's my new material? So let's go ahead here and click on material one. And let's select the base color right here. So I can click on here. And again, I can pick from um, color picker. Why not? You know, RGB, hue saturation, or hexadecimal. Okay. And so now I have blue selected. And I'm good with that. And now I don't see that, but if I switch to, uh, let's see where we go here. Let's make sure that the tabletop was selected. And that is my base color. So why isn't it? And that's principal DSDF. Let's see why it's not showing up. Um, should be here. Let's click here, see what we're looking at. And I don't know why. So let's look and let me go ahead and select the table legs as well. So I'll select the first one and I want to create a brand new texture again. And again, I'll select the base color and let's make these orange like so. And I'll select this one and I'll do the same thing. I don't want a new texture though, is instead what I can do is I can select from my existing textures. I should be able to go ahead here and I'm gonna select this one here. And I can click the back one and do the same thing. Click here, select material two, click this one and select material two. Now this one is changed, the, the table legs are, are showing up and why they aren't with the tabletop at the moment, um, I'm not sure. Okay. So let's select here and make sure that um, we could use nodes to fix that. It should. Let's pick a different color from this and see what happens. Let's pick a deep red or something. No, it's not showing up. So I need to fix that. So the next step, um, don't have too much more time here. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Is um, I'll start with the lamp base. And again, we're gonna use a cylinder. So I need to look at it from the top view or rather a sphere. So let's look at this from the top view. And I need to create, an, um, I wanna add a new object here. I'll go to mesh and let's um, select sphere. Okay, and again, I need to change its proportions. So I'm gonna use the scale tool. Let's go ahead and change its properties like so. And change its properties like so. Make sure that it's sort of the, um, the football shape that we were talking about. So let's now look at this from the Y view. And again, we're gonna change the proportions of this a little bit. So it's a little bit squattier. Let's move it. So I use the move tool over here. We'll move this up like so. Okay. It's a little bit too big. So let's look at it again from the Z perspective. And I'll change scale again. I'll make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Close enough. So I need to look over here and look at its properties. So. There we go, transform, which is this one right here. And we can see that, um, again, it's off a little bit, but this is where you need to go back in and to change to make sure that the I want the X and the Z to be the same. So if I change this like so, I want it to be 330. 
so that they are identical to one another. Let me try to change it again from here. No, I'm not. It's, it's really hard for me to control this over here and I don't understand why. So I have it changed. So let's go back over here to you know, move and let's go back to perspective to see how I'm, what I'm looking at here. So now I need to make the base a little bit um, broader. But instead of ob um, object mode, I'm going to select edit mode. Okay. And now what I can do is I can select, let's look at this from the Z axis again, or the Y rather again. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, and move this down using the hand tool a little bit. And what I want to do is I'm going to select the bottom pixels here. So I'll select these guys down here. So with just those selected, I can go ahead now and with edit, I can go back and I can change the scale again. Okay. So let's go ahead from the top view. Because that's what I need to see to be able to change that scale is I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out. Come on, come on, come on. Why aren't you changing? There we go. So there's something that I screwed up. So let's go back again. Let's undo a few steps. Let's go back to Y. Okay, let's go back and let's edit. And I want to change these right here, these pixels. Okay. And I want to make sure that I can edit them. So let's go ahead and change from here. There we go. I can change that out like so. Um, let's look at the Z from the top view. And I need to change this out. I don't want that, no. So I don't see the other one. How about that? How about this one? So maybe I didn't select all of them. That might be a problem. Let's go back again. <clears throat> Let me look at it from the Z. Um, I want to see it from top view. There we go. Let's go ahead and look at it from the Y. There we go. Select these again by clicking and dragging. Um, let's deselect. I want to select more. It's odd that when you know you're doing this on your own, no problems. And now when I'm demonstrating it, I have issues. So I know that you guys are going to have to um, to leave now, but I'm gonna, I need to use the scale to change this. So that will be it for today. And then we'll come back and I'll use again a cylinder to make the the lamp shade. Okay. So let's um, call it quits for today because it's already um, 11, almost 11.15, 11, a quarter after. And I'll continue to work on this and to fix it and hopefully get back to where I was with the, the last version that I had of this. And I'll clean up some of the sizes and everything on this. Okay. Um, so that's it for today. Um, I'm sorry, again, more glitches with this, but we're getting a little bit further with Blender. And I think we have a nice um, uh, finished version, or close to being finished with um, LightWave. And then we'll um, continue. Um, actually, if you could, if you're using LightWave, go ahead and try to finish it up over the weekend, because next week in LightWave, I'd like to start um, the uh, reboot character. But for those of you continuing to use Blender, um, I'll give you a little bit of extra time because I'm kind of slow on this myself and to try to help you finish this up using Blender. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and stop um, recording right now and then that will be it for today. So um, 
have a good weekend and I hope that you guys um, are able to continue with LightWave. And if you're working on Blender on your own, um, I did post a couple of tutorials on Canvas and also in my Blender folder. So you might wanna take, take a look at those for creating cable and lamps. Um, they're a little bit different ways of approaching. You'd have to watch those again and again to be able to do that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the chat here. Is it due today? No, you have the weekend to work on this. And you'll probably have part of next week as well to work on it. So no, it's not due today. Okay. Okay. So again, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna pause recording this and um, we'll call it quits for today.